All right, high rollers, thrilled to have this guy on with us today. We've had three world champion poker players on before. Tom McAvoy, a poker hall of famer, Chris Moneymaker, everybody knows him, and the fossil man, Greg Raymer. Now we have just scored our first world darts champion. He won it all at the lakeside back in 2008. Beat the Wizards, Simon Whitlock, seven sets to five in the final. He's won tournaments all over the world, including the Welsh Open, the Northern Ireland Open, and how about this, the Canadian Open too. That's where I am, and wow, what a job he just did commentating the PDC World Championships. He's a lefty, and he's one of the very best. Mark Webster joins us now, the spider. Mark, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for being our high roller today. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. I'm glad you put the Canadian Open in there as well. As I think it's worth a mention, definitely. Hey, I tell you what, we defend our territory. That's not an easy tournament to win. <laughs> no, it was a tough one. It was, it was a bit, I remember when I was probably 11 years ago, I was all round robin as well. So you play a hell of a lot of games, a lot of short formats. So it was a tough thing to win. And obviously I played it, obviously a homeboy in the final, so it was difficult. But no, good, a good week. Now, where was it? Do you remember what, where you won in Canada? Saskatoon. Saskatoon. Oh, right in the middle of the country. You can watch your dog run away for uh, an hour and you can still see him. It's that flat out there. <laughs> I remember, I think when we traveled over, we, we, we landed in Calgary actually and hired a car. So we had a bit of a drive, but it was good. It was good fun. It wasn't winter, was it? Uh, no, it was in June. <laughs> You're lucky. Right. I was very impressed. I think a lot of people were loads of positive comments on Twitter, social media about your presentation, your analysis. I know you've done some commentary before, but... That was the biggest stage of them all, right? The Worlds. How did you feel in there? Yeah, you know, it was, it was mixed emotions, really, because obviously I wanted to play. You know, the ultimate goal was to play, but so I enjoyed the commentary side. It was, um, you know, darts is a, is a sport that I, I got into because I liked it, you know, simple as that. And it's just a bonus that I made a bit of a career. So I still watch it when I'm not playing. So the commentary side of it, you know, I've, I think I've taken it because I just sort of watch a lot. And, and for some reason, I, I remember results and stats and stuff quite easily. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it really went well, man. I really enjoyed that myself. I'll tell you this. I watch a lot of sports. Darts has got to be number one or right there in terms of its play-by-play -play and commentator people. You know, Sky, Sky Sports, ITV, the BDO, the PDC, you name it. You've got some great commentators in darts. You guys are part of the entertainment. It's good right now, right? Yeah, I think you, you've got to have that balance, haven't you? You need a, a, a player in the box as well, as well as a pundit, and it just helps. They bounce off each other, and uh, yeah, the, the, the player's there to offer the, the insight because they've played on the tour. So, yeah, definitely. I think the presentation of the sport's really good. Like you said, Sky Sports and ITV covering the PDC now. So, it's um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just good for us guys, isn't it? It's getting us out there. Yeah, some great guys in the box. I mean, yourself, John Part, Martel, Mason. I love them all. Everyone's doing a fine job. I've always wondered how ex-players, ex-athletes find their way into the broadcast booth. Is it something that you initiated for life after your dark career, or did they approach you? No, not really, because obviously it's it's kind of, in a way, in, in some sense, the, the dreaded step, isn't it? Because you think, a lot of people think your sort of career's coming to an end. But um, no, I was just... I got a phone call to work on the Championship League of Darts, which is on BBC. And um, I've worked on that for the last three years. And then Sky got in touch sort of before Blackpool this year. And I've, I've worked for Sky for the, the match play Dublin. I was supposed to work on the Grand Slam, but I uh, qualified. So I played instead of uh, uh, obviously working. And, and then the Worlds. And the Worlds I really enjoyed. It was, it was long days, but good days, really. It wasn't, you were there at 11 to 11, but it went by a click of a fingers. It was, you know, it was good fun. And it, it, the guys are good as well, so enjoy it. Absolutely. I love the Worlds this year, man. So many players, so many good players. You've had time to process everything now. What are some of your main takeaways from the Alley Pally this year? I mean, the darts were so good. So many big moments. MVG wins it all. He wins it all after a fan dumps beer all over him during a walk-on earlier. I mean, it really was a spectacle. What are your takeaways? Yeah, obviously, Mike fair play to me. He won it quite easily in the end, didn't he? he just You could see from the word go, he was determined, but I like that, 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 you know, that little section of the draw where all the players came through and it created an opportunity. And Nathan Aspinall, I was quite pleased for picking up from nowhere 100 grand and going up to 34 in the world. You know, it just shows getting that world to take your chance and you can sort of put your career on the right path after one tournament. Yeah, I mean, Nathan Aspinall was on fire. Luke Humphreys, too. Those two players, for me, seemed like they really came of age. Yeah, yeah. well, Luke as well. Yeah, I should, should maybe Luke mention because Luke, obviously... He probably needed a little bit to do the back end to qualify, and he got to a semi just to qualify. But then, when he was up there, he looked apart, didn't he? And he looks like it looks like if he's going to be a more stage event, and he's going to be 
a force really because he just doesn't look flustered he uh, taking out the defending champ as well so good tournament for Luke and like I said a, a jump up the rankings as well and he's only just he's only had his talk out of here so fair play to him you know, a lot of people were talking about that top half of the draw, that semi-final clash between Anderson and MVG, everybody looking forward to it. But you mentioned it, right? MVG won this tournament rather easily. Yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not really a, de- a detriment to the other players. Gary had to go, Michael Smith had to go, Aidy had a good go, to be fair, but he was just determined. I think, he probably came, I think, I'm, I'm not having this. He, he thinks he should be the world champion. He hasn't won it now for, as only t- was it, Last year he didn't defend it, so for him it was one year without winning, it's one year too long. So because of the circumstance, he lost it last year as well to Rob Cross. I think he was determined this year, and it showed. And it he's never, never really under much pressure. And like I said, he just looked focused the whole comp. I mean, what do you say about MVG that hasn't already been said? He's the best of the best, and I'm wondering what makes him that way. Is it just natural talent combined with the mental game, or or does he work harder? I don't know. Uh, I think obviously. He openly says to me he doesn't really practice much now because he's playing so much he just ticks over. But he just got that confidence, hasn't he, and determination, and uh, doesn't let a defeat bug him. Really, you know, yeah, he's upset for a few hours, but then he just moves on and believes he can win the next tournament and one after that. And even on the rare occasions where he gets like say three comps on the trot and he doesn't make a final, you're guaranteed he'll win the next one or something like that. So he's just got a really good approach to it and a good attitude. And now he's uh, reaping the rewards. He's you know financial status is fantastic so he's probably just relaxed now and he's playing gonna play even better which is a nightmare for the other guys yeah no kidding a couple other other things fascinated me about the world championships this year first the asian invasion we're not talking paul lim either i mean noel malikdom and sego asada wow did they bring it or what do you know i've worked on both their games uh, uh malikdom pushed kyle anderson all the way malikdom had five dance go two sets to one up and I don't think he could he could shake that off then. But he obviously beat Jeffrey de Graff, but that was the key moment for him. But he made a good account of health. And uh, Asada beating um, maybe could have beaten James and, and beating uh, Christoph from two from two sets to nil down. So yeah, fair play. And they're just going to keep coming back now. But I think what we need from them guys, one, we need Sago to maybe say, look, I'm going to go over and do the tour. I think it'd be fantastic for him, the tour itself, and, and Asian dance if he just commit. Obviously, I know there's circumstances you can't just drop out in and come and move over but it'd be great if you could absolutely i mean and the more time they get on the big stage the more big events they play they're just going to increase their skill level their averages and it's going to be fantastic the other thing that i took away was this women's uh, participation anastasia lisa i absolutely love them being there i really enjoyed ashton putting decker under the cosh i mean did you see his reactions he was in a tight he was in a match yeah, and, you know, then fair, you know, fair, everybody was saying well done to Lisa and Anna, and, you know, fair enough. But, you know, Jan and Ryan as well dealt with the situation really well, didn't they? Jan, Jan played it like any other game. He was giving it the big fist pump and that. And I think people sort of took objection to that. But he was just playing it like he's playing a normal player. There's no special things made. And like you said, I, I, was, I was impressed with him, really, because that first set was 104 average. And you're thinking, oh, here we go. But no, no, it, they were a good addition to the tournament. It, it gave saw a lot of coverage and I think we, we just need a couple of the women now to have a go on the, the PDC tour try and get a tour guard if not play the challenge tour get the experience because you know they're good enough now they're, you know, they're getting better Where do you think the ladies game is right now? They need more exposure we just saw Fallon Sherrick put in a world class performance at Lakeside Anastasia was dominant last night there's quality there Trina Gulliver was in the broadcast booth I mean we're making progress but there's still a ways to go Yeah I think do you know what, without being, I don't think there's enough depth, is there? And, um, I mean, when I played the BDO, the entries compared to the men and the women was, uh, there was a massive difference. That's where it is. And then, obviously, if you don't get the entries, they're not going to get the prize money. So maybe women won't commit too much because it's not worth their while. But, like I said, we, we need some of them to have a go at the PDC. If it, getting a tour card is going to be a big task for anyone. You know, it's going to be really tough now. But the more they play, even if they play the challenge tour, I mean, Lisa Ashton played it a few times this year. I think she got to a quarter final as well, so on the last sixteen. So I think the more competitive practice is needed for the for the women. But yeah, they, like I said, they're getting more competitive. They've had their world championship, which has sixteen in now, so that's a start. But they just need a, a few more incentives just to encourage them to improve and stuff. But no, like I said, Lisa, Lisa and Anna did them no harm in the world championship. 
Yeah, they really played well and put up a good showing. I saw a tweet a while ago from a darts fan, and I always said that if I had you on the show, I would ask you about it. Nothing against Raymond Van Barneveld, not his fault. But I'm wondering, does it bother you when he gets introed as five times champion of the world and you get introed as former Lakeside champ? You know, I've never noticed. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I found it a fascinating tweet because it was a great observation and it, and it stuck with me, you know? Yeah, um, do you know what? It's one of them, isn't it? I'm not, I'm not too, if people call me the BDO world champ, the lakeside champ, you know, I, I know I did it and it was, you know, I still got the memory. So I'm not too touchy about things like that. But yeah, it's a good spot to be fair. I've never really noticed. I haven't had a walk on for a while, so I need to get back up early. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I, I was re- doing some research today, and I saw that Gary Anderson was in that event. You beat Simon Whitlock. I mean, it's quality. Have you been watching the BDO championships? I have. There's always some gripping action there, right? It gets tense. It gets exciting. It's always fun. Yeah, you know, I, I've glanced here and there watching bits. Um, I was impressed with Wayne Warren. I uh, thought he was brilliant. But yeah, it's... You know, there's been a lot of nerves there, hasn't there? In particular, it's you play all year round to get in that competition because they haven't got like we have a lot of competitions a year, and they're playing there and they've committed, and they just don't want to let themselves down, and they get a bit nervous. But it's tough up there, do you know what I mean? It's um, you know, especially the prelim round as well. Now the guys are just playing a game just to get to that first round. But no, I, I think they've been all right. They've been nerves, but I've been impressed with Wayne Warren. But I expect the Ram to win it again, and then. We'll be seeing him on our tour this year, I think. Yeah, three times world champ. He'd make history there. Ty, some great legends. Um, The state of the game right now, it's scary, right? I mean, everybody is so good nowadays. You see it everywhere, Q School. You'll see it this Thursday at the BDO. Uh, 13-year-old Leighton Bennett in the World Youth Final. I mean, 13. For the kids these days, the dream of a professional darts career, it's real, right? I mean, the money's there, celebrity as well, and they're going for it. Yeah, without doubt. Well, we were talking about this the other week. You know, youth players are playing for... They can go to a development tour and you have four on the same weekend. So it's two grand... Pa- they could potentially win £8,000 on a weekend. I think you'll be 16 and over, but, you know, it's, what an incentive. You, know, you wouldn't... You know, 10 years ago, you wouldn't say to a youngster, you know, be a professional dart player, but you generally can do it now. And then on the on the knock-on effect of that, you do well on the development, you come on to the main tour and then it can just snowball. So, yeah, it's like, like you said, the state of the game is brilliant at the minute. It's... Uh, and the financial incentives are massive as well. You win one game on the main tour and that was £500. It's just unbelievable where it's come from. Yeah, it really is. Darts has grown so big. Lastly, and we really do appreciate your time, Mark, the state of your game right now, I know you struggled for a while releasing the dart, but lately I watch them all and it seems to me that you're back, you're, you're right there or thereabouts. Yeah, it's, you know what, the, the, the release side of it's fine now, but you know, I think what people forget during that period I, my confidence took an absolute pummeling sort of thing and it's uh, some of the victories I got they were like hollow victories because I'd had no rhythm and I, I remember a game particularly with Stuart Kelly I played it was a shocking game and I was so I, I felt like I brought him down it was a it was a tough time I was picking up wins but they were they were hollow victories so now whilst I've cured that it's there's a, there's a lack of confidence there which I need to get back but um, yeah like you said it, it's better but I've got to improve I've got to be a bit more bit more relaxed when I play so hopefully that'll come this year well I'll tell you what I've been watching I think you will good luck not only at the hockey but in the broadcast booth you did a great job world champion of darts back in 2008 at Webby 180 on Twitter a left-handed assassin and now one of the top guns in the booth Mark thanks so much man really do appreciate it yeah no problem anytime